surprise, surprise. I finally put myself on camera, guys. So Brother Ron Dalton Jr., the author and movie producer of the book series and uh, movie series, Hebrews to Negroes, recommended that I get on camera. So here I am, <laughs> finally on camera. So the most high willing, there'll be some sort of future collaboration. Let's hope and pray. So check out his books and movies at www.thenegronetwork.com. I have the link in the description box. So welcome to video number nine in the series Hebrew, Ivri, Ewe, Ewe, The Black Man. My name is Seiram Ajanku. The picture in the background, well, the, the collage, uh, in the background is actually, there are images of the Exodus Commemoration Festival uh, that is called Za from various online sources. I got these, that's where I got these uh, these pictures. So the Hogbechocho Festival is a celebration uh, of the Exodus. So it is celebrated on the first Saturday of November of each year in Everland, in the Volta region, the Kingdom of Judah, AKA the so-called the Slave Coast. This is our cultural point for today. So don't blink. The people uh, reenact the exiles on this occasion. Uh, these days, they mainly celebrate the most recent exile, which is the one uh, that brought them to the present location where they are on the west coast of Africa. But the people have undergone multiple exiles uh, from the land of Canaan to their present location today. The customs, well, the costumes worn uh, for the exile reenactment are very peculiar. They physically wear as many uh, of their belongings on their bodies as possible. Just uh, as many as you can in order to be able to still walk long dis distances. So that's why you will see uh, that they have uh, multiple necklaces, bracelets, anklets, um, armlets, leg jewelry, head wraps, and various fabrics on their bodies uh, during this reenactment. Um, and they also carry their seats, their cooking utensils, their mats that they sleep on, uh, and other items on their heads. So these images depict what uh, 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 an exile, an exodus would have looked like uh, in ancient times. So in the days when they had horses, donkeys, and cattle, uh, they would have obviously loaded their, their goods on these animals. Uh, the animals are not a part of the celebration anymore because they're they're not commonly used anymore for transportation. So that's why you don't see uh, animals, uh, load bearing animals uh, involved in the celebration. So the foods though, the foods which the Eves eat today also tell of their exilic history. Uh, many other foods have a long shelf life and can be easily transported. One such delicious food is called gari, and it's made from uh, cassava, or some call it yuca. So thanks to Rabbi Akwete Ama, the ga eve rabbi, uh, you can now find a prepackaged, ready-to-eat gari here in the US and I believe in the UK as well, don't quote me, but you can go and check it out for yourself on uh, the website, www.di-gari.com. The link is in the description box as well. So back to the Exodus. One of the ways in which the Eves preserve their oral history is through names. They name places, name people, uh, they repeated the names, and so that's how we find them now. The names tell their story. We will see this phenomenon come to life when we revisit one major exilic, exilic route of the Eve, 
of the Ewe people, one of their major ones. So that will be later in this presentation. All right, let's go to the topics for today. All right, today's topics are going to come from Numbers chapter 13 and 14. This is the history of how the patriarch, Mosa, was directed by the Lord to select a leader from each tribe and send them to go spy on the land of Canaan, the promised land. The biblical account tells us that there were 12 false spies sent. When they returned after 40 days of, of uh, spying, 10 of them attested to the fact that the land was in fact rich uh, and fertile but discouraged the people from going and taking it because they were afraid of the inhabitants of the land whom they said were too strong for them. They, um, the remaining two spies, Caleb and Joshua, gave a report in favor of going and taking the land because they trusted in the Lord. In this lesson, we will analyze the names of five of the spies as well as the name Canaan and the word Hamashiach. Hamashiach is not part of the number story, but uh, I think it's long overdue. We've touched on so many names. We've touched on Yesu, we've touched on uh, Yeshua, and but we never actually um, touched on Hamashiach. So anyway, the five spies in the number story that we're going to talk about are Shaphat, Yigal, Hoshea, Ephraim, Cal and Caleb, or Caleb. All right, let's get into it. All right, Shaphat is the first name. Shaphat is from the tribe of Simeon. This name is found in Strong's H8202. It is spelled Shin or Sin, Pe or Fe Tet, which is S-P-T. The modern Hebrew meaning ascribed to this name is judged or has or he has judged. In Eve, SPT is se porta, which means the Lord has gotten a leader or the Lord is watching over us. The sound p, which is found in the Eve language, is not found in the Masoretic text. So uh, the, the only representation of this sound is the pe, which is also the fe. In Numbers 13, verse 1 to 2, we read, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. The people who are called this name in the Bible all have a position of, of leadership in their tribes. We have a son of Horai and the, the prince of, um, of Simeon chosen to spy uh, out the promised land. A father, the father of uh, prophet Elisha also is called this name. A Judahite son of uh, Shemaiah and descendant of Zerubbabel in the royal line of Judah is also called this name. A chief of the tribe of God is called this name. A son of Adlai and uh, chief herdsman, uh, who's also a chief herdsman um, for David over the, the herds in the valley is also called this name. So Sekbota is the correct pronunciation of Shaphat, and it means the Lord has gotten a leader. All right, our next name is Yegal. Yegal is uh, from the tribe of Issachar. This name is found in Strong's H3008. It is spelled Yod Gimel Aleph Lamed, which is Y G A L. The modern Hebrew uh, meaning ascribed to this name is he redeems. In Eve, Y G A L stands for Yab Gali. Y Gali. That means 
Yava still is. He still is present in existence. So Yagal or Yagali, Yavagali, was a son of Joseph, of course, of the tribe of Issachar, a spy of Israel. Now, Oshea. Oshea is from the tribe of Ephraim. This name is found in uh, Strong's H 1954, and it is spelled He Vav Shin Hosin Ein. The root word, however, is spelled Yod Shin Ein, the, which is Y S or S H A. The modern Hebrew meaning ascribed to this name is salvation, as we all know. Now let's look at the name in Eve. Oshea has the same root word as Joshua or Yehoshua or Yeshua. And it all means the same thing, which is hand of Yah, hand of Yava, um, uh, or yeah, the hand of Yava. Uh, what comes to mind when we talk about the hand of the Most High? His hand rescues us. He is our salvation. His hand protects us. His hand provides for us and so many more. Now, Numbers 13 verse eight tells us that Hosea is a son of Nun from the tribe of Ephraim. Ephraim is a name which we haven't yet spoken about. We spoke about his brother Manasseh, but we, or Manasseh, but we didn't talk about Ephraim. So we'll talk about Ephraim on the next slide. All right, the name Ephraim. Ephraim is not one of the spies, uh, but we are going to talk about the name Ephraim, where it's found in Strong's H 6, uh, 669, and it is spelled Aleph Fe Resh Yod Mem, which is A F R Y M. The modern Hebrew meaning ascribed to this name is double ash which is very strange to me. And then they go on to say, to, to put a colon and say, I shall be doubly fruitful. So are they saying double ash heap? Uh, in other words, I shall be doubly fruitful. I don't think the two have anything to do with each other, but let's leave that alone and move on to the Eben. In Eben, Aleph Fe Resh Yod Mem stands for Eplem. Remember, the character that represents the Pe and Fe in the Masoretic text will need to represent the P and P in Eve. So we have here Eplem, which means he has purchased me or he has bought me. It also means, it could also mean Eplem, because that Pe or Fe could very well be P. So Akpalom, which means he guides me. Why would Joseph name his son this name? He was, uh, he has bought me or he has purchased me. I think we already know the answer. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers, but that wasn't his end. The Lord ordained his steps and exalted him to positions of power and he was no longer under bondage. So by naming his, naming his son this name, Joseph is testifying that it was the Most High who purchased his freedom and guided his steps. Do you see the culture on full display here? I think so. All right, let's get back to the spies. All right, now we have the name Caleb or Caleb. He is from the tribe of Judah, Yadu. Caleb is found in Strong's H3612. It is spelled Kof Lamed Vet, which is K-L-V. The modern Hebrew meaning ascribed to this name is dog. Yes, you heard me right. Dog is what they said Caleb means. And this is because 
that was what it means in Aramaic, which is closely related to Arabic. In Arabic, Kalib is pronounced Kalib and dog is pronounced al kalb So you see where they got the meaning from. Anyway, we're going to leave that alone and move on to the Ebe. Now let's restore the name back into the Ebe language, the ancient Hebrew. In Ebe and in context with the text and culture, we see that KLV stands for Kalevi. Kalevi means son of courage. In Numbers 13 verse 28, we read about 10 of the 12 spies giving a negative re report about their ability to take the promised land. It reads, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, who are the children of Anak, they are descendants of giants. Verse 33 says, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sights as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So you can see they saw themselves little, and so the people saw them little as well. Now let's look at Caleb's response. Numbers 13 verse 30 reads, and Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. So Caleb is encouraging them here. He continues on in Numbers chapter 14, verse six to nine. It reads, and Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephune, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel ye not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. So this is the courageous message that Caleb, supported by Joshua, gave the people because they stood on the promises of Yahweh. Caleb is Kalevi, which means son of courage. All right. I think we've gone through enough of the names of the spies which Moses sent. So let's move on. Now, let's look at the name Canaan or Kana. In the Strong's, it is Strong's H 3667, and it is pronounced Kenan. It is written Kaf Nun Ai Nun which is K-N-A-N. Canaan or Canaan was a son of Ham. His land or the land that we know as Cana bears his name. So his name is also the name of the land. The Bible says the Most High gave the land to Yasara, Israel. It is described as a land that flows with milk and honey. As we read earlier, we also found it in Exodus 3 verse 13, and it reads there and says, And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. The modern Hebrew meaning ascribed to the word Cana or Canaan is lowland. This is because it is in the valley and it is a coastal land as well. In Ebe, K-N-A-N stands for Kena or Kana, Kana or Kena. Ke or Ka, it means soil or sand. Na means to give or yield or provide. So 
Kenna or Kana means the soil yields or the soil provides. Other variations of this name are Kanan or Kenan, which all mean the same thing, the soil yields or the soil provides. This is the name they called the land, which, they, which uh, yielded so much unbe unbelievably well that they've never seen before. So the account speaks of them having to even carry a cluster, one cluster of grapes on a pole between two men. So the land was incredibly fertile and yielded unbelievably, unbelievably well in those days. Kana and Kenna mean the soil yields. That's the name which we call, or they call Kana today. All right, I am excited to finally be at this map. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> so this is an updated map. I made one uh, for the first video. So now it has a, a few more names on it. Uh, as we uncovered more, as we uncover more names in the future, I will be adding them uh, to the map so that we can have a, a map that's growing before our eyes. This map represents one of our major exilic routes. There were many exilic moments and routes. This is just one of them. Let's read it from uh, the Northeast, starting from the Northeast. From Kana, we went to Keme. From Keme, we went to Ketume. From Ketume, we went to Seme. From Seme, we went to Ife in modern day Nigeria. From Ife, we went to present day Benin, where we named two towns using old names, the old names of Ketume, which is short, uh, which is Ketu for short, and Kana also with, uh, in Benin. From Ketu, we went to Tado. From Tado, the Anglo Eves, the Levites settled in Keta. So what is the big deal here? The big deal is in the names, the meanings of the names, the meanings of the names. It's a huge deal. So let's look at the meanings. Kana, as we revealed earlier, means the soil yields. Keme means in within the sand or the soil. Ketume means in the bowels of the sand or in the bowels of the soil. So deep within the sand. Seme or eh, seme means in the law or abiding by the law. Ife is a Yoruba word which means love. And we know the Yorubas are related to the Evers, just as the Gans and many other tribes are in the four corners of the earth. Ketu is the same as Ketume, which is in the bowels of the sand or within the soil. Tado means the head has arrived, which is to say that the royals are here. Keta means on top of the sand or on top of the soil. So we can see that the Evers named these locations in this particular route. And in the first video, I did, uh, we did prove the presence of the Evers in those locations on the maps, which were drafted by Europeans in the 16, 17, and 1800s. In video number eight, we pointed out three towns in Kana, the Kana, uh, the original Kana in the land of Judah uh, during the time of David, which are found today also in present day Volta region of Ghana and in Togo. The towns were Ajake and the two Sokode or the two Soko. 
So those were the three additional towns. I couldn't fit them all in here in this map. It would have been very difficult to see. That's, for, uh, that's it for the maps for now. But before I close, I must speak on one more name, Hamashia. This name is long overdue, Hamashia or Messiah. Messiah or Mashiach or Hamashiach is found in Strong's H 4899. It is pronounced Mashiach and it is spelled Mem, Sin, or Shin, Yod, Chet. So M S Y C H. Or if I was spelling, if I were to spell this in Ebe, the CH would be an X, the H sound. The modern Hebrew meaning ascribed to Mashiach is anointed one. In Eve, anointed one means is, is pronounced amesiamina. That is an anointed one, anointed person, amesiamina. Amechiachia is the word for the chosen one. I'll say it again. So, Yeshua Hamashiach is Yeshua or Yeshua, that is the hand of Yah or the hand of Yahweh. Amachachia, the chosen one. So, he is the hand, the executive hand, the one doing, and he is the chosen one. Yeshua Hamashiach is Yashiwo Amechachia. So you can also see Chosen Vessel, the preacher's channel for more explanation of Hamashiach and other words. The link will be in the description box. We have arrived at the end of this lesson. Here are the references used, including the hyperlinks. I'll post the references in the description box on YouTube. Before I go, let me leave you with this Eve song. The lyrics go like this. Surely we will reach Kana. After our toils and tears, we will reach Kana. Surely. I'll sing it. Mia de Kana la godo. Mia de cana la godo. Kutri kuku plavi fa fa mevi. Mia de cana godo. Kutri kuku plavi fa fa mevi. Mia de cana godo. And that's all for the song. Thank you for following, liking, and sharing. I hope you've been blessed. Yaira Nami.